the dice tray module's popularity is no surprise. It's a great, simple utility for Foundry VTT, but there is some surprising depth hiding inside. Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailey Wiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular systems and scenes for Foundry VTT that you can use without any setup. Some of those are going to be the backdrop for today's video where we're continuing our series on the top 25 most popular modules according to Foundry VTT. Today's module is the number two most popular module for Foundry with an installation rate of about 42%, and that is Dice Tray. It's a really simple module and may seem like everything is just as it says on the tin, but there are some surprising amounts of depth hidden beneath the surface. So today we're going to be exploring those hidden depths in our deep dive on Dice Tray. Dice Tray is a really great straightforward module here in terms of its basic functionality. It adds this really nice widget down at the bottom of your chat with all of your dice. And when you left click on a die, you will add it to the roll formula. And when you right click, it will remove it. This is much more preferable than actually having to type out, say, 1d4 plus 1d6, etc. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Notably, you can also still interact with your chat if you haven't pressed the buttons. It won't have the highlighting for you, but you can still remove it. So again, if I have 1d6 and then I right click on the d6, it will remove it. Also includes nice things like advantage and disadvantage in D&D 5e. Otherwise, it'll have a kh and kl for keep highest or keep lowest, which allows you to just hit this roll button to roll from the dice tray. And as you can see, this is set up to interface with our most popular module of Dice So Nice, completely ready to go out of the box. If you would like to add several die and then you want to roll it, again, you can just hit enter rather than having to hit the roll. And you can further customize this or modify your rolls by using the plus and minus for your math modifiers here. This also supports after you have added whatever you need, say we're giving a situational plus two here, but you can also then use things like abilities dot int dot mod for Gomer here. And this is going to add our intelligence modifier. So you can just add on to the rule formula if you have things like those specific ability modifiers that you want. I would say generally in my experience, both myself and players tend to just add the number that they know corresponds to the bonus rather than typing it out, but it does support that. Now this is of course fantastic functionality right out of the box. This is super handy if we're doing really simple things like someone fell down in a precarious situation, roll a die to determine what direction they fall, then you can just really quickly hit the 1d8 or if you want it to be a different kind of setup, you know, whatever dice you want, it's really easy for that. And it can also be really helpful, particularly in automation light setups where you just need a quick roll of a die or something like that. You don't want to pop up a whole character sheet, etc. Then having these dice here really quickly to be able to make these little ad hoc rolls or these situational things where you just need one of these other dice, then it's super helpful for that. So we can access the dice tray from right here in our chat. Additionally, if we go into our settings, there is an option for this dice tray pop out button and also auto open pop out. And these are going to be features that you can enable on a client basis, not just globally, but you can add a little pop out for the controls. If you're using a lot of modules, I would highly recommend keeping this on just token controls. Reason being is that it's adding it in all of the sub controls, but it's going to be in a slightly different position depending upon how those controls are modified by other modules or added to by other modules. And so you could have it in kind of a strange place sometimes. So I'd recommend keeping it in just token controls, or if you aren't using a lot of modules, you can go ahead and use the all controls. So you save the changes. 
We'll see now in my token controls. So I'm in primary token controls and then down here I have the dice tray button. And if I pop that out, it will give me the dice tray right here and it's modifying my chat. So that's another really nice feature is that you can add this anywhere and have this floating around just so that you've got it good to go. And this will persist after you change tools. So it's not like the pop out requires you to be in those tools. That's just where you access the toggle for it. And if you want it to go away, you can just turn it off. And similarly, we can use the option for auto opening it whenever you load the page. Then if you like having that pop out all the time, then you can have that there. So it's kind of a handy feature and something that's not seen in some similar modules that have some slightly more simplistic approaches to what Dice Tree is doing. Finally, in settings, we also can change our right click functionality. So by default, it's going to be decreasing the dice. You can change it to roll a single die. And if we save the changes, then whenever I am right clicking on a die in my chat widget, it is going to just roll that single die here. So this could be useful if you are playing something where you just want to really quickly roll the dice as opposed to clicking and then having to hit roll or enter for each individual die. Could be a little faster if that's the style that you like. Let's take a look at where Dice Tree starts to get really interesting. And this might not be something that you are familiar with. A lot of the things we've talked about so far are pretty apparent at first blush. But when we open up Dice Row's configuration, then we get this really interesting array of possibilities. So there's a few basic bits here, like the compact mode, just shrinks everything to a single row if you like that smaller, more minimalistic look. And then you can also use that to hide your number input if you're not in compact mode, then you're unable to do so. You can also choose to hide the roll button, so it's just on enter. I personally wouldn't recommend that if you are using the pop out, but to each their own. And then where we get really interesting is with the dice themselves. So if you're using, say, D&D uh, &D 5e or DC 20 or Pathfinder 2e, any system that really revolves around a D20, you may want that to stand out a little more at a glance. It can be a little easy to lose it for the D12. Of course, once you use it a bit, uh, you might be able to recognize it really fast or just know the position of it. But when you're going fast and maybe if you have a smaller UI, then it can be easy to miss. So maybe you want that to stand out more. So we can change the color on this and we can see the little preview. And when we hit save changes, we'll see down here that on our dice tray pop out, the D20 is now red. And the same thing is true for the pop out that we can open using these token controls in the button. But in addition to the color coding aspects and that customization, you can also create dice. So when we create a die, we have the formula and this can be as simple as one D three here. Say we're using a D three a lot in our game or with some of the characters, etc. We're going to use just a D three. Then for image, we can specify whatever we want. This is optional. Not everyone has a D3 kicking around, but maybe you want to use an icon that represents what your D3 is usually rolled for. If it's something like that, like a regular event or something like that, that you roll for a lot in your games, then you can set up that icon. If not, you can apply a label and that's just what's gonna stand in for it. And if there is no label, then it will go back to using the formula. And then tooltip is whenever you hover over it, what it says, so D20 in this case. In this case, we'll say D3, and we'll go ahead and create the die. And we can see on this preview, there's the D3. And if we save the changes, then it's updated down here. You will need to close and reopen the dice tray with the popout for it to update on the popout. Then you can see we can simply click and add in the D3. And the D3 rolls just fine. In Dice of Nice, it's a D6 just with two for each value. But this gets even more interesting when we revisit that formula section. And for the formula section, we can get as complicated as we want for this. So for example, we have a typical stat generation in D&D &D 5e is going to be 46 and then keep the highest three, right? So we can use this for a stat line or something like that.
And now when we roll this, we can see that we have the 46 and the key pi is three. So we rolled three fours and a two and we dropped the two. So we have a 12. So this is a really cool way you can customize this a lot and add extra functionality for your games. And if you wanna get rid of any of the dice that you've added, you can simply right click to get rid of them. And you can also do that with the core dice as well. And if you decide, oh, I didn't want that change, you can simply close and not save it. So you always have to hit save changes if you want things to propagate and actually store. Now you may be thinking, Zephyr, this is all well and good to have the full RPG dice set, but I play a system like, say, Fate or Grimwild or something like that that uses different kind of dice mechanics. I don't really need the regular RPG set because I'm not typically rolling just one of those dice. I'm rolling a lot of other things that have some modifications. Well, your wheels may have already been turning a little bit when I showed you the formula customizations, and this is where Dice Tray truly starts to broaden the horizons a bit, and that is going to be with some system integrations that already have really nicely configured dice. In fact, D&D 5e already has a little bit of that in the form of the advantage and disadvantage buttons because they're labeled such as opposed to keep highest or keep lowest. So now let's go ahead and take a look at one of the kind of crowning features of Dice Tray, in my opinion, and that's going to be these system integrations. So here we're in the Fate Core official system, and you'll notice that the dice tray looks a little bit different. Rather than having the full RPG dice set, we have just the D6, and then we also have a button for Fate dice. We still have our mathematical modifiers here, and instead of advantage and disadvantage, we have keep highest, keep lowest, and we still have our roll. So just like with the D&D 5e example we showed earlier, we can left click to add D6s, right click to remove them. And we can also left click to roll fate dice, which are DFs if you were not familiar. And then we can hit enter or roll to roll it and it will output our results to the chat. So dice tray brings this really nice system integration to fate as well as some other systems. And here in Grimwild, we have only four buttons. So we've got our dice button, our thorns button, and our pool button with roll. So in Grimwild, you're typically adding dice, and then the DM adds some thorns based off of the difficulty of the assessment. So we have those built in. We could see this was a messy result, then downgraded to a Grim because of that thorn. So we've got full system support here for Grimwild. These are far from the only system supported by Dice Tray. On the screen now, we'll have a list of all of the systems that are officially integrated within Dice Tray, the module itself. Additionally, there are ways for systems or other modules to support or integrate with Dice Tray. So this may not be an exhaustive list. If you are playing your favorite game system that has some special unique kind of dice operations that you would really like to have available to you in Dice Tray. If you go in and you customize it and that's good enough for you, fantastic. But if you want to have an official integration with Dice Tray that is going to then be distributed to other people, check out their documentation for submitting those kind of system integrations or reach out to the system developers about creating that. Most of these system integrations are created by volunteers or system devs. So there's definitely room to get involved if you want to see some more systems supported by Dice Tray. But it does really cover most of the big players that have unique dice systems right out of the box, and the customization helps you get there pretty well too. And that's going to conclude our deep dive on Dice Tray. We hope that this has shown you some of the interesting capabilities that are present with Dice Tray especially the aspects of customization and the system integrations that are available to you. So this is particularly attractive for folks that are using systems that don't use just the standard set of RPG dice or combine them in interesting ways, like just the two systems that we highlight today of Fate Core and Grimwild. And with all of this information, let us know in the comments what you think about Dice Tray and its position in the top 25 most popular modules according to Foundry VTT. Does it deserve that number two spot just behind Dice So Nice? 
Or do you think it's kind of overrated and you think something else should be in its place? Again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, we also gain access to all of those modular systems and scenes that we've made for Foundry VDT, like the ones you've seen in the background here today. Again, it's been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming, and have a good one.